What's up everybody? Today's a huge day here in the studio. We're going to talk about all things NFL, see how politics is tanking the sports industry in a go woke, go broke segment. Then I'm sitting down with former police officer and University of Arizona Wildcat, Brandon Tatum. We'll talk about his football journey, where he thinks sports will be in five years, how athletes and leagues should support law enforcement, and then he's going to judge my top 10 NFL quarterbacks. You don't want to miss any of it. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway. Welcome back to Breakaway. You've probably heard about it by now. Go woke, go broke. That phrase is all over the internet. It's all over broadcasts. And you might be like millions of Americans that stop watching sports. Why? We're going to break down all the numbers and probably give you the reason why you and so many people decided to stop watching these games. So let's start with the NFL. The NFL decided, hey, they're going to put social justice names on the back of their helmets. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about their viewership numbers. Yeah, the NFL, they took a tumble a little bit. Not quite as bad as some of the other leagues, but they still opened last season down 13% on viewers. They did manage to rebound a little bit, down 7% only. Yeah. But this is a league that over the last few seasons has been going up and up and up. Yeah. So that was, that was quite a bit of a uh, bad take for them. And then, too, we think about the MLB, America's pastime. Mm -hmm. That's one of America's greatest sports. There's no way they got hit that hard, right? Oh, little do you know, John. <laughs> MLB playoffs were down 40% on viewership. 40%. And the MLB All-Star Game, second least viewed MLB All-Star Game in the history of doing it. I can't understand why. Oh, no, who knows? <laughs> but moving the game, yeah, out of Atlanta and moving it to Denver, that was disastrous oh. for those numbers. And then also, to the NBA playoffs. Let's talk about those and the finals. Yeah, the NBA playoffs, it's kind of kind of funny. They were up here in 2021, I believe, because LeBron was out, mm -hmm. but still down 35% from 2019. People were not watching live sports. Yeah, and then even the NBA Finals in this year, I'm, I'm really sorry about your sons. Oh. I'm, I'm so sorry. I have to, I have to bring it up. Oh my I know gosh. you and hundreds of thousands, other, maybe even millions yeah. of Arizonans were watching the Suns. But right, from here, they were... They were down in numbers, but when you watch the NBA Finals, it's on ABC and it's free. So there's absolutely no excuse. So I think we have to bring it back to the NBA bubble. Mm -hmm. The pandemic. You're wondering, how are numbers this far down? Everybody's at home. It's shelter in place. So why were the numbers down so much? Because there were social justice jerseys. There was nailing for the anthem. I think it is one of the worst marketing ploys they ever did in the NBA, was trying to put social justice messaging on the back of these jerseys. People need to know who Luka Doncic is. <laughs> Funny thing is, you have these names on the back of these jerseys, so it's like, Black Lives Matter passes to I am a man, guarded by uh, Say Her Name, throws it up to justice, ooh, swat him. <laughs> like, hey, th this is know, kind of garbage stuff we're seeing. Uh, just just wait, I got equality taking home most improved player next season, so just hold on. <laughs> but the league response too, when they saw these numbers, they knew they had to do something about it. So Adam Silver came out and said that, hey, we, we need to do something about this. What do you say? Yeah, Adam Silver basically set out, it came out and said, hey, I get it. Some of you are saying, I just wanna watch a game. And so he decided there's going to be no more social justice messages on the back of jerseys, no more Black Lives Matter on the court. He backtracked, he went, oh crap, my numbers are down. These leagues make the majority of their money from their TV yep. network deals. So he saw the numbers and said, I'm running the other direction. But you have other leagues like the NFL and the MLB, they've doubled down on their messaging too. Don't go anywhere. We're going one-on-one -on -one with former University of Arizona Wildcat and former police officer Brandon Tatum. I'm John Root and this is Breakaway. Well, ladies and gentlemen, look who we got here. Former University of Arizona Wildcat, former police officer, actually used to work here at Turning Point yeah, as well. Yeah, Glad you're back yeah. in the building. Welcome, Brandon Tatum. Oh, thanks for having me, man. I hope I'm not offending any ASU fans out here. I don't know. <laughs> no, not at all. But everybody would love to hear your story about getting to Division I football. And then you were NFL helpful as well. Can you break that down? Yeah, I was. You know, um, not, not mean to brag on myself, but uh, I was a tremendous athlete in high school. I went to Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. Uh, we had uh, so many athletes. I mean, we had nine Division I athletes on one team. 
Uh, four of us were all Americans. We had Miami and all the all the top schools used to come to our practice. Of course, right in the hood. Yeah, I mean, you know, dodging bullets at our practice. <laughs> you know, so dodging defenders, is, is yeah, dodging bullets. Right, so, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Uh, my high school football coach told me to take a look at the University of Arizona, and I believe that God wanted me to go there. So I went to the University of Arizona, and I just never played much, man. And I, I was in the 2010 NFL draft. I didn't get drafted, and I was heartbroken. But I, I think God had a, a better plan for me. Yeah, I mean, you've made just incredible impact, you know, being a police officer and being a political commentator. For you, did you see this woke culture and leftist ideologies getting – um, ingrained in sports. Did you see that yeah, coming no, or did you get blindsided? No, I'm completely blindsided. Yeah. Uh, I, I never in my life thought that they would be as woke as they are today. When we were playing sports, I mean, if you had a microphone in the locker room, I mean, everybody would be banned. Yeah. You know, everybody would be banned <laughs> yeah. on social media. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> joked, we high-sided, it was racial. You know, it, yeah. it, it, we, had a, we had a good time. We loved each other. We, we, we competed together. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a tremendous experience. And now, I mean, they so woke, man. I don't even understand how they compete, um, how black and white players even compete today, or if you're a Trump supporter or not, yeah, how are you even on the same team? You know, and it, it's very shocking and, and troubling, and I'm saddened, and I think it's gonna destroy sports to a certain degree. And then too, you made some incredible impact too when you talked about Colin Kaepernick kneeling. Oh, yeah. So I know you went, viral with a lot of those comments. So looking back now, do you feel like you were able to really hit all the points you wanted to? Well, at the time, you know, I, I was I was fed up. Mm -hmm. You know, I had watched these crybaby athletes out here complaining about things and, and not being grateful f and understanding that they're playing a game. They're getting paid millions of dollars yeah. to, to have fun every day. And I compared that to being a police officer. When I was a cop, our game was life and death. When you lose as a police officer, you're dead. Yeah. And your family have to suffer the loss of a, of a, a you know, a great individual. Um, so I, I was fed up, went to my car, made the video, and I'm, I'm incredibly, you know, disappointed in people like, you know, Colin Kaepernick and those individuals who live the American dream yet disrespect the American flag and the anthem. And so he was taking a knee, in my opinion, to protest the fact that he had lost his job to a white quarterback. And he wanted the limelight again, of course. He, he, of course he did. You know, think about this for a minute. He never complained. He never was an activist, even in college. He wasn't an activist. He wasn't an activist when he was playing, when he was starting, when everybody was thinking he was going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, only when he was on the bench, he did those things. So um, that's why I came out against him to, to set the record straight. Well, did you stop watching? Because I know we just talked about go woke, go broke. Because yeah. I know for me, I love sports. Yeah. I wasn't a stud like you. I played Division <laughs> two. <laughs> but there was times where I'm like, I, I don't know if I even want to watch sports right now. Yeah, it was definitely an effect for me because I, I would – I couldn't watch these people disrespect our country. It mm -hmm. was a level of protest on my end to say, you know what, I owe it to our country to protest um, these sports teams that are doing these different things. And, and uh, I didn't watch football, I think, for two years. I tried to watch a little bit on, on YouTube every yeah. now and again, and they're, they're at it again, yeah. you know, with all of this Black Lives Matter. And it's like, I don't want to watch your activism. I want to see you throw the ball to that guy and him get knocked unconscious. That's what I want to see. Yeah, of course. You know, and if you're not doing that, then why am I watching? Yeah. I could go watch another sport. So it, it definitely took a hit from me, man. I, I, I'm, I'm forever scarred at, at the NFL for that because I really honored those players and I thought that they were great leaders. And now you realize that they're just dumb they're just about as dumb as they come mm -hmm. of some of them not all of them yeah. and their wokeness is is apparent and there you feel like just media needs to change too and like how do we push back against that yeah you know right now i think there's gonna have to be a pushback directly meaning that it, the more woke they go mm -hmm. the more we need media to counter the wokeness yeah. you know i would love to talk about sports because i think that's incredibly important and i think people want to hear that however you know some of the things that they throw out needs to be countered and we're seeing inside of sports too there's such a racial divide and there's also such a villainization of police officers law enforcement mm -hmm. and a lot of first responders so yourself as a former police officer when you hear someone like lebron said black people are getting hunted every single day but if you were sitting with him right here right now you had a couple moments with him what would you say before or after i slap him a couple times <laughs> no i'm just joking i'm just joking i don't believe in violence unnecessarily but <laughs> you know I, I think i think if he wanted to have a candid conversation and keep it 100 i say you know what lebron you have an incredible uh, following you have incredible influence do you you could be one of the premier athletes ever you know i don't consider him that way because he's so woke and, and he whack half of the time and he yeah. jumps into politics and he shouldn't however do you can be excellent you know you can be like mike 
You know, can you? No get one's your, saying be like Braun. Right. That's the thing no, too. No, because he's too he's too weak. He's wimpish. You yeah. know, you, you watch him in the game. He foul. He this is the biggest, strongest <laughs> dude out there, and he fall on the ground and crying, yeah. walking in with five minutes left in the game. Dude, you would never be like Mike. However, if you want to set the record straight, then I think you should be more informed. Yeah. You know, inform yourself on these things. Don't try to be so woke and outwoke the next man. Go do a ride along with the police department. Yeah. Take it was a police officer in LA that said, "Hey, I'll take you Offered. up. On, yeah. I'll offer you up. Come, come train with us. Come see what it's like to be a police officer." I would tell LeBron James, "Take that yeah. and, and go do that. That's that's what a real leader would do." And then once you've experienced it through a ride along, once you've gone through training, once you've gotten some perspective of law enforcement, mm -hmm. then make commentary about um, certain elements that you believe uh, that you're passionate about. But don't lie to people. You live in a multi-million dollar facility. It's not even a house. This is a facility you live yeah. in. You live probably in, a, it has a gate on it, on acreage, yep. and you probably live off a private road. Brother, when you walk out of your house, nobody sees you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But your millionaire neighbors, mm -hmm. potentially. Yep. You're not walking out of the house in fear of police officers. LeBron James, how many times have you been ticketed and pulled over? Probably, they will never give LeBron James a ticket, yep. especially not in the hometown where you're playing ball at. So don't lie. Keep, keep it 100, keep it real, and I think you can, you know, you, you'll, you can be like Mike. And we're going to get your take on some of my top 10 QBs heading into the NFL uh -oh, season uh -oh, in just a uh -oh. second, but I have to know, who do you think is going to win the NFL Super Bowl this year? Uh, I was almost at the Patriots. Tom Brady. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm saying. Tom Brady. Whatever he's at, they're probably going to win. The Buccaneers have an incredible team, man. Their defense is lights out. They got I, everybody coming back, too. Everybody. Most, most of them are coming back. And, and, and Le, As yeah, a yeah. Falcons fan, I'm just kind of disappointed. They, they may make it to the playoffs. But they gonna, I don't think so. That would be a miracle. Yeah, they, they ain't going to make it to the Super Bowl. But I think that, you know, Tom Brady is an incredible leader, man. Even, even his lighthearted comments he made about, um, you know, in a – at that uh, speech that he had with Joe Biden when they were invited to the White House. Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of shows his, his impartial leadership, you know? Yeah. He can still make fun and not get in too deep into politics and get into his own beliefs. He can still be lighthearted and lead his team in the right direction in an impartial way. So I think, I think he got it on, man. I mean, they got good running backs. They got him. They got good wide receivers. Yeah, I mean, even Antonio Brown, which is the nuttiest player <laughs> in the NFL, I don't know how he's playing. But God must have a plan for him because yeah. he got back in the NFL after, you know, tape record, secretly record people. I well, mean, that's another thing, too. It's like if you can get the job done, they're going to give you a look, job. Look, that's this is this is why Colin Kaepernick is the biggest liar in the world. OK, mm -hmm. he claimed that he didn't play because of racism or systemic uh, oppression or whatever he was yeah. trying to claim. Well, Michael Vick killed dogs and went to prison and came back and started in the NFL. Yeah. And Antonio Brown had the commissioner, I believe, on tape record, call him the N-word, all kind of stuff. He was doing all kind of nefarious yeah. stuff. He should have never played in the NFL again. Because of his talents, he played and ended up winning the Super Bowl. So I would say I think it's going to be the Buccaneers. And that linebacker, I don't know his name. He was from LSU. That dude is a monster. He ran yeah. a 4-3 and a 40 coming out of college at his NFL combine. Devin White, man, Devin he, White. he was he's one of those video game players. You know, when I used to play the video game, I used to recruit people, yeah. you know how you get the of stats course. up. Yeah. He was one of these fake players that were, you know, a linebacker running a, with 99 speed. Yeah. I mean, that guy, that guy's trem a tremendous athlete. Well, you're in the 99 club as a dad, former yeah. police officer, oh, former yeah. D1 athlete. You heard it here first, Buccaneers are gonna win another Super Bowl championship. We really appreciate it. We're gonna be right back with you too. We need to hear about what I have to say with my <laughs> NFL quarterbacks. Thanks a lot, Brandon. All right, brother. <laughs> Coming up next, Brandon Tatum's gonna give his take on my top 10 NFL quarterbacks, and that's happening right after the break. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway. Well, the NFL season is upon us, and I got to break down my top 10 gunslingers in the league. Brandon is back. What's up, Brian Farnsworth? Producer Brian's here, too. So Good to be here. I'm going to start with number one. Seriously, give, you, give me your unfiltered take on all this. So, okay. But I will tell you this right now. It is the best top 10 you'll ever see. Number one, we're starting with Patrick Mahomes. No doubt the most talented quarterback in the league right now. Back-to-back -back Super Bowl appearances. Obviously, the last one was not good, but he is unequivocally the best quarterback right now, number one. No, I think he's a tremendous athlete. I, I think that's a good pick. 
Man, he's got he's the highest rated QB by uh, Pro Football Focus over the past three seasons. So he is my number one. Number two, Aaron Rodgers, reigning MVP. Rodgers had all that drama over the summer. I mean, was he coming back to Green Bay? Was he not? But the nice thing is, is now that he's for sure going to be playing this season in Green Bay, he's got everything set up. He is coming off an MVP performance. In my opinion, great number two, second best quarterback in the league. Number three, Tampa Bay, Tom Brady. So obviously he just got another Super Bowl ring and he's got his full squad back. We were just talking about that. Brandon said that the Bucks are gonna win another Super Bowl. That makes me really depressed. <laughs> um, I, would, I would actually switch him with Patrick Mahomes you know, on that list because I think you put Brady number one. I think he would be number one because he's a winner, man. Yeah. He is going to how how in the world did he get on the Buccaneers and turn around and win a Super Bowl? He make it look easy, man. I'm still they trying to figure it and out. And they started out rough, man. They, they started did. out rough. It wasn't a clean a clean break for him, but he still turned around and found a way to win. That dude is a winner. Number four, Deshaun Watson. Uh, we'll stick to just uh, on the field stuff. <laughs> but as a talent, he has to be incredible in his position because his defense is garbage. He's great. He's young. And honestly, any team is going to be lucky to have him. We'll see uh, how long he's playing football, though. That's the biggest problem. Number five, remember this guy being the front runner? as MVP last season, Russell Wilson. Honestly, I think he's been one of the most consistent QBs ever since he jumped into the league. So he's top five, no doubt. Yeah, I think, he, I think he'd be in the top five. Number six, Josh Allen. You gotta love Bills Mafia. You gotta love Josh Allen too. 69% uh, of his passes he completed, 37 touchdowns against 10 interceptions. And he also rushes for TDs as well. He, he gets it done and he's only 24. Personally, I think you have him a little low and if I were you, I wouldn't go into the city of Buffalo anytime soon. You put this guy six. These are people who jump off of RVs, crushing tables to prove their loyalty the, to the team. They might strap me down yeah. to that foldable table too, just jumping on me on that one. Number seven, my boy, Matt Ryan. Matty, Matty Ice, the former MVP. I am a little biased and it might be a little, little high on this list. I can see you squirming over there, Brian. Look, here's the only thing I'll say. Nobody loses Julio Jones and gets better. That's the only thing I'll say about that. God, that hurts, Brian. Uh, number eight, Dak Prescott. Oh, no. Oh, oh man. No. <laughs> Listen to this. He was on pace for almost 6,000 yards throwing last season. I think number eight is a good place uh, for Dak. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't be in my top 10. Uh, I'm a Cowboys fan, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Texas, so, you know, of course I got to like him, even though they disappoint me every year. I just feel like Dak Prescott and uh, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, they're prima donnas, man. They are prima donnas, in my opinion. They cannot get elite players. I don't I don't know why. Believe me, Brandon, I, I know all about disappointment. Yeah. With, with your <laughs> NFL team. Look what I'm wearing right now. Right. <laughs> Number nine, uh, Lamar Jackson. There's been two unanimous MVPs in the league, Tom Brady in 2010 and Lamar Jackson. Jackson in 2019. The deep ball obviously still could use some work, that's for sure, but he gets it done with his feet, and I think he's one of those guys, too, that he finds ways to win games, yeah. too, on his own. So I think when we're talking about just from an individual standpoint, Lamar Jackson is one of the most fun players to watch, and the way he leads that team, too, he's dangerous with the ball in his hand. Yeah, he's the most dynamic quarterback. I mean, Michael Vick was the one, right? Mm. You know, nobody's uh, yeah. going to be another Michael Vick, but I think that he is better than Michael Vick. When mm. I saw him in college, I said, man, this guy is like a Michael Vick, but bigger. He can throw better and he's more agile. I mean, that guy is an incredible athlete. I, he probably can play every position on the field. So, mm. I mean, I would rank him a lot higher. I think his potential yeah. is much greater. Uh, I think his potential is up there with Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Patrick mm. Mahomes had an incredible team, incredible coaches. Um, but, you know, this young man that, that you just brought up is, is an incredible athlete. And yeah. if he get the right amount of teammates around him, a little bit more maturity, I mean, he's going to be probably at the top of that list. <laughs> Number 10, Matthew Stafford. He has been in such a crap hole <laughs> in Detroit, and it has just been a terrible place for him, and it's been an absolute waste. I think he can do everything all these guys in the top 10 can do, but he hasn't been able to show it off in Detroit since he just got picked up by the Rams. I think he's gonna have a chance to really shine like he's never had a chance before. So that's why I think he cracks the top 10. And then even after this season, and we do this again, and we're running him back at TVUSA HQ, I yeah. think he'll be moving up quite a few slots after this season. I, I would have put Kyler Murray there at 10, but obviously I'm a Cardinals <laughs> fan, I'm a little biased. Mm. Uh, I love a little Mighty Mouse when he's running out there, it's insane. But all I can say about Matt Stafford, 
I am not looking forward to the Cardinals playing him twice this Ooh. year. He, every time Cardinals play the Lions, he would find a way to do some sort of last second touchdown to either tie it up, send us into overtime. Uh, it just makes me sick. He's a great quarterback. He's such a gritty player too. He's someone that you want to root for consistently yeah. too. He just gets it done. So that is my top 10 NFL quarterbacks of the season. You guys are a little iffy on you some of those. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you got a C plus. <laughs> C plus. You don't want to miss what we got next. Brandon Tatum is going to be on the hot seat for the 40 second shot clock. That's coming up next. I'm John Root and this is Breakaway. This is the 40 second shot clock. Brandon, you are on the clock. Rapid fire questions start out with this. Favorite player of all time? Michael Jordan. Uh, as a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be like Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> what number did you wear in college? Uh, 34. It's the greatest sports movie of all time. Uh, I forget the movie with Michael Jordan in it. <laughs> what is it? Space Jam. Space Jam. Jam. There you go. A lot of Michael Jordan. Least favorite player of all time? Uh, Tony Romo. <laughs> oh. Which president in American history would be the worst pro athlete? Joe Biden. <laughs> you get five swings of the plate against Shohei Otani. Are you making contact? Of course. I'm a beast. Last question, hottest sports take? Uh, LeBron James should never be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, that's fire. And I think we just hit the buzzer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's all we got for you. The show is wrap. Brandon Tatum, thanks so much for joining us. Producer Brian, always a good time with you. Make sure you like, comment, and share so we can keep the conversation going. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway.